This beer is an extract lager I brewed just recently that you can see in this video here. I brewed this using cheap ingredients to see if I could make uh, a decent extract beer as cheap as I possibly could. I just basically want to see if I can get a nice, easy drinking summer keg filler. And using the extract lager can from Woolies cuts my costs right down. So I can produce a pretty decent beer, hopefully, for around $20. Now this beer was really, really good initially. I got 22 litres out of my fermenter. I put roughly 18 to 18.5 litres in a corny keg. And I put the remaining 4 litres into a 5 litre mini keg. Now I drank the 5 litre mini keg first, just to get it out of the way. The beer was delicious. Uh, it was a nice clean lager, it had that kind of clean W3470 taste um, and it just went down really, really easily. It was a nice hot summer beer that you could make really cheap. I pretty much um, emptied that four, liter, 4 liters out of my mini keg within about a week, week and a half tops. It was that good. Then I moved on to the corny keg and tapped that and started to drink that. Immediately I noticed a taste difference between my corny keg and my mini keg. And unfortunately the corny keg, for some reason, the beer in it had a distinct metallic taste to it. Which I couldn't pinpoint. Now, interestingly, that's the first use of that corny keg. I did wash it, pull it apart and clean everything thoroughly in PBW. I rinsed everything thoroughly. Um, I filled it using brand new star sand mixture. Uh, right to the top and then I purged that out with CO2 and then filled my fermenter directly into it. The corny keg was filled first and the four litre, oh, sorry the five litre mini keg got the remaining four litres at the end of the uh, transfer. So I'm not really sure what happened with the corny keg. I don't think it's anything to do with the beer itself. The beer tastes, apart from the metallic flavour, or the metallic note, the beer actually tastes really good. It's a really nice light lager that has that classic W3470 kind of um, uh, feel to it when you're drinking it and when you smell it. It's super clean um, and it's just a nice easy drinking beer except for that metallic note that I'm getting from it. Now, I don't know if it was the keg. It could possibly be the keg. Um, I can't see how it could be anything in the beer itself considering the four liters I drank out of my mini keg had no issue. So what I did was, um, as soon as I emptied one of my Fermented King Juniors, I transferred immediately from the corny keg into the Fermented King Junior here. And that's how much I've got left of it now. And I basically got out of the corny keg just in case there was a constant thing going on where that metallic note was getting reinforced. I just got it out as quickly as I could and I got it into here. Unfortunately though, it has kept that metallic note. But instead of tipping it out, what I've been doing is just blending it instead. So I had an IPA in my fridge, a red IPA, that I brewed as a fresh wort kit. Now, unfortunately, I had an issue with the IPA as well. Um, I brewed that just before Christmas. I was just in a rush and wanted to get, again, another keg filler, um, a nice IPA on tap. I brought a wort kit, uh, I poured it in. I used some distilled and some pure water mixed together, uh, fermented it uh, with Voskovec yeast, and uh, I think I kegged it at about day six or seven after a big dry hop for a couple of days and it was cloudy and muddy and it has never cleared and i don't know what is wrong with the beer but i suspect there may have been something wrong either with the uh the pure water i put in but it was pure water i bought from the supermarket or possibly it was a problem with the fresh wall kit i just don't know i don't know what happened to it so what i've been doing is i've been mixing that ipa into the lager and it's been creating a nice kind of hybrid uh, ale and it hides the metallic notes and also helps to water down the heaviness of the IPA. Now, if I ignore the metallic note, the flavor of this beer is actually really nice, really clean. Um, I would easily drink half a dozen of these on a hot day, uh, especially if I brewed it to a nice lower alcohol. 
Um, unfortunately, I did brew it a little bit too high, as you saw in the video I posted about it, about the brew day. Uh, and I think I ended up with a 5.6% beer in the end, which is a little bit too high. I'd rather get it down below 5%, more like 4.5% would, would be even better. That's probably ideal. So what I'm going to do probably is um, in the next couple of months, I'm going to get another Woolies Lager can and I'm going to brew it again. And this time I'll, I'll, uh, I'll tank it in the Fermented King Junior. I won't put it in the corny keg and I'll see how it comes out. Um, and hopefully it comes out beautiful, clean, no metallic flavor. Now the only other option for metallic flavor in that beer could come from the can itself. Uh, the extract was a few months old. But I've never had that before in an extract beer. I've never had a metallic note before. So whether it was something to do with the new keg that leached into the beer, I'm not 100% sure. So I'm gonna have to brew it again and see. So I still believe that you can make a really nice drinkable beer from um, the Woolworths Lager can using W3470. I think it makes a great keg filler and a really nice beer on a hot day where you can knock a few back, as long as it's not too strong, of course. So, to conclusion, still a great beer, um, and I can mix it. Never throw away a beer with a slight issue. You can always blend it with other beers that you have, and that's the beauty of being a home brewer. Having different taps means that you can just blend beers together, and if you have an issue with one, you can cover up, up with another and so forth. If, if one is a bit strong, you can, um, you can water it down with one that's a bit weaker. And a lager beer like this, makes a really nice beer that can actually water down something like an IPA and give you more of like a pale ale instead of a full-on 6 or 7% IPA. So anyway guys, there it is. That's the update and the tasting video for this beer. The lager brewed with the Woolworths extract can. I'll brew this one again to see how it goes. Otherwise, I will finish this off. I will blend this in with my IPA and finish this tank off. And tonight I'll be uh, I'll be kegging a pale ale, an all-grain pale ale I brewed about two weeks ago. That'll take its place. And hopefully we'll have a nice Pilsner to brew and do a video of it in the next two weeks. So apart from that, cheers everyone. Here's to good health, good brewing. See you next time.